I'm here this uh, week with Craig Lem. Welcome, Craig, to Covenant Conversations. You, you don't know what you're getting yourself into, do you? No. Not so, at all. I'm sure many of you know Craig. Um, he's been at Covenant for, for longer than I have. Um, but, Craig, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, um, sort of who you are, what you do, sure. your family. I know you have some here at Covenant. Sure. Well, um, my name is Craig Lem. I've been a member since 2000, I guess officially 2014. Okay. And uh, grew up in Cherry Hill. My brother and I actually live in the home that, that uh, my parents built. We moved here when we were two. I was born in Camden. So um, my brother and I went to Queen of Heaven, which is now the Yale School. Okay. There used to be a Catholic school. Interesting. We attended there. We went to Roman Catholic Church all our lives. We both attended Bishop Eustace Prep, as did Barry's sons. Yes. And then I went to the University of Notre Dame undergrad and uh, wound up going to Spain and the Dominican Republic for a medical school and trained in Philadelphia at Hahnemann, which is now Drexel, which is now closed, <laughs> and did my pediatric training there. And I've been a pediatrician for 30 years up in uh, Northeast Philadelphia, Bucks County. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So um, I know you grew up in Cherry Hill. So tell us a little bit about that, growing up in Cherry Hill. I know um, Lim's Tea Room. Yeah, Lim's was Tea it, House. Was, was yes. it Tea House. Lim's Tea House. It's, was an institution. Exactly. So, was, so what was that like? Well, it was the first actually Chinese restaurant kind of in the suburbs. It was kind of like more what would, what would you say uh higher level dining yeah you know, rather than like a, a whole new take restaurant kind of thing, yeah. out in chinatown so w they were the first restaurant in the suburbs we were probably one of the first asian families in the suburbs as well and actually we used to work there my brother and i we used to when we were younger we'd wash dishes i'm sure you did and then we got old <laughs> when we were older we would actually serve serve the the customers we were waiters wow so that was a, that was a, that was a great uh experience because uh hey just to help our family because hey they put us through all this schooling and uh it, it was amazing so so you must have, so it's right by what used to be the the horse race track yes so was that uh, like did you well, ever go to the horse races was that frowned upon i don't know no, well it was interesting <laughs> because a good friend of mine through grammar school that lived down the street right right by near us by the Rolton swim club on park boulevard his father was a jockey okay and he turned out to be a jockey wow. and we would go and help out with the father but i had bad allergies so we go to the stables and i'd come out like 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 horrible so, swollen but, but and that, coughing exactly <laughs> and then they one time i wasn't here when they when the track burned down and then they then they rebuilt it so that was really kind of uh, interesting i just remember seeing that on the news but uh now the restaurant's mikado if you've ever seen the mikado with the big sign right that, right, that was right. home's tea house yeah yeah. yeah, cool. Um, so tell us a little bit. You said you grew up going to Catholic school, Catholic church. Um, how did you come to faith in Christ? Um, sort of what's your testimony in, in that way? So actually, heck, most of my life, I mean, we were raised as Roman Catholics, went to mass every Sunday till we got to a point where I guess we were adolescents. And at that point, our parents didn't, I would say, force us or, or make us go to, to church. And then through the years, because of... I, I guess you're getting into the theological part of it, that uh, uh, when you go to college, you start having uh, education and as far as exposure to other cultures and other religions. And I mean, I was walked away from it, basically, or, or was I not trained properly as I know now? Right. So it was 2013, actually, uh, Annette, my sister-in-law, was at an ESL barbecue for after the ESL finished up in Cooper River Park. Okay. And Barry was picking up a friend that was a, a semi-pro or pro hockey player at the airport, and they were getting ready to go to Turkey to okay. do hockey ministry with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So we went to the bar, because I went with him to pick him up, Gary's his name, and we went to the barbecue. And then we were just talking on the side, and he had asked me, he says, well, do you go to the church where your brother goes? And I was kind of like, well, I really don't practice, honestly, any, any kind of religion at this point. And it's like, okay, so see, he pointed me to Lee Strobel's The Case for Christ. Yes, okay. Which is an awesome book. So, yeah. so I read it, and it's like, wow, I mean, without going to seminary, it's like kind of sums everything up. And then he had me read the book of John, he said to just start it. And then that just set me right, 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 right. Immediately I realized what it really meant wow. because it's all based on the Bible, right? Solo, solo scriptura, right? Right. That, that basically it's, right. it's God's inspired word. So that set me to where I'm at now. And it's yeah. like, that was amazing. It's like almost all my life. I mean, you talk about 40 some 
fears where I didn't know I was lost. So 2013, you sort of had that encounter and mm -hmm. read, and then 2014, you joined Covenant. So joined Covenant officially. Um, yes. Wow, that's that's quite uh, that's quite amazing, and I know. I could talk to you for hours yeah, about theology absolutely. and things. Oh, yeah, we won't, oh, yeah, it's, we won't get into all of it, yeah, yeah. but um, sure. <clears throat> I've heard other people being brought up Catholic, and it's sort of the first time they actually read maybe the Bible or, or really exactly. focus on, you know, even the doctrines of grace. Yes. That it's sort of, for many people, it can be very eye opening. Yes, exactly. Because they never taught us in, in elementary or high school. You might have theology class or religion class, they would call. But every week when you had the mass, it's basically the same. And they would, I think there's a liturgy that they go through every year. So there's certain epistles, right? right letters and certain right. gospels that they go through routinely. Right, different readings. And, and things. different readings. And it was never promoted to read the Bible. And mm -hmm. obviously we know that there are different books that are not in right. our Reformed Bible. So right. So it, it, was, it was really interesting to, to see the difference because it was... As we all know, basically you're thinking workspace where you, if you're good and you do these things to, to get God's grace, and it's, right. it's, it's totally, no, no, it's not, not, not that way. It's like so, so growing up in Cherry Hill, and I'm sure you drove by Covenant all the time, well, it must have been uh, weird to sort of all of a sudden come in this church well, and be like, oh. Well, actually, <laughs> with my a brother and I and a good friend that was kind of our best friend that grew up right on the corner, uh -huh. we were always together, the three of us. We used to ride our bikes by here all the time because yeah. we live about a mile from here. Right. So we'd go by this way and do a circuit, come up 70, come down Kings Highway and go yeah. down Park Boulevard or cut through the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So it's like we see it all the time. It's like we didn't know. It's like, right, so, okay, there's another, there's a church. I mean, it's not the Catholic church, but hey, at that time, you don't realize, right? Yeah, as, it's a, just, as a kid. Yeah, so, sure. interesting. Yeah. So um, as a doctor now or, you know, a pediatrician mm -hmm. for 30 years, you said, which, mm -hmm. is, which is amazing, um, how do you feel like your faith as a Christian sort of impacts your work? Well, look, I, I, I was started as a pediatrician before I actually became a believer. Right, right. So I found that actually my interactions are much better. I'm more of a witness because we know that, and it's interesting, um, that uh, we, we are like, we're supposed to be, we say, what, the, the sweet aroma of Christ. Yes. So people should be seeing that. In so us. should be smelling us. Smelling us. Smelling us. Well, I don't want to smell us or sniff us. But, <laughs> yeah, no, I but, know what you but, mean. <laughs> right, but uh, that's what they should and I, I should be seeing in us. And I just realized that, and just even through the, the missions that I've been going on, it, it's it's something interesting in the sense that not only to your patients but to your coworkers, because not everyone's a believer in our practice. I think some of the people are Christians, but my my partner, right. and one of the other docs, are actually Jewish. Hmm. So there's obviously sometimes I can see the different ways they approach things, and then and, and then just sometimes if I can, which I don't do enough honestly, is you share the gospel with with patients and even pray with them for certain right, situations. Right, right. And I found that actually there there's some patients that you even find, form a closer bond because you prayed with them. Mm -hmm. I, I had one one family that came back because they had to leave because of insurance purposes. And I prayed with them because the son developed some kind of illness. I had to send him to the hospital, and went, and they came back to visit. So it was wow. like it was a, very impactful for me. Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how the um, the spiritual and physical are connected. Yes, absolutely. And, and also, I think for especially as a pediatrician with my own kids, I find myself um, at some point you realize I can only do so much, right? Exactly. Like I, I can't it, heal my absolutely. children. I can't make my children you know, do these things. And so it's almost like, I'm sure there's a, as a pediatrician, you see a lot of mm -hmm. stressed out parents. Oh, and to have absolutely. like the voice of like, you mm -hmm. know, even without necessarily having to get into everything, like mm -hmm. there is hope, there's a greater absolutely. purpose, there's a greater, um, a greater sure. one watching over us. But exactly. um, so when we think about you know, the medical field or, or just our culture in general, and we know there's a lot going on. What do you think is the most sort of challenging, um, concerning trend that you see, um, especially for, for young families and children, um, today's world? Well, I'm just seeing it and just looking at it historically, because I've been reading some, some, some uh, older... Uh, sure. Christians like J.C. Ryle and yeah, yeah. Gresham, Jake Gresham Mason. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's cyclical uh -huh. because even during their times, like 
Ryle was like late 19th century and Gresham the beginning of the 20th right. century, right. talking about basically how the church has become so liberal and we're becoming more secular and relying on the material world and not relying on God, the spiritual part of it. Right. And it, it, it's, it's, look, we're living now in the 21st century and this pandemic has been like so hurtful to most people. I mean, just from the physical part, I'm, I'm even now from the medical standpoint, having to be a psychiatrist because the anxiety and depression that had developed True. and people, in some ways it's, you wonder, is, is this pandemic to bring us closer right. to God ultimately, right? Yeah, so yeah. People have to, do, because it's like, we can't do it ourselves. Although a lot of people, whether they're atheists or agnostics, think they can solve everything with science per se, but no, ultimately it's not. That's, we are, and that is an instrument. Yeah. instruments of God. So a lot of people put their faith in science. E exactly. Which is ironic. Which, yeah, which true. is from God, right? It's right. like people don't realize that. Right. So, yeah. It must be like pretty cool to know from the medical standpoint and the body and studying the body and at some point sort of as you became a Christian and to continue to see the way that God is has like designed us and is so sovereign over these things where I, it's just like how could how could we have come from any other source almost, you know? Exactly. Um, well, one interesting one that always kind of, I guess it kind of like, what do you say, blows my mind as far as the beginning of the universe, right? It's like people say, oh yeah, that is just a big, everything randomly just out of nowhere. Well, how did it come with the planets to be as they are? Our DNA that's so complex, right, right. Come, and it, from nothing. How right. does it come from nothing? I right. mean, look, there's somebody or something, to, to, yeah. right? Yeah, intelligent design, right? God wouldn't say one well, not intelligent, but God created, yeah. created everything. So, yeah. So um, I know that you've, at least in the last few years, um, really been involved with medical missions through MTW, Mission to the World, and the PCA has medical mission teams that go out to different places. And I know you've been on many trips. I know there was a chunk of time during COVID that, that you couldn't go and you just yes. recently went yes. on another one. So, um, you know, I know there's probably a ton you could share, but what sticks out as just one impactful, memorable moment from one of those trips? So interestingly, I was strong, strong thinking about like what, what really was impactful to me that way. And it's interesting in the sense that this last trip we were on, <laughs> it kind of overlapped with another trip. So I had this mother and daughter come, and then I was able to have them do ultrasonography on them, and they had issues. And, and uh, afterward, mom, mom had just come to tears and just like looked up and said, God, God is here. It's like, because it's an answer to their prayers. Mm -hmm. And it happened one other time too. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, it's like, it's, hey, like I said, we're his hands and feet here. So we were there when they have no medical care whatsoever and no way to determine what's causing their problems and and that happened this is the second time it happened one other time that I recall but even the first day I was told that there was a, a woman that had come to the clinic and it was it was that just like an answer to what she'd been praying for and said oh God is here to wait for me and and hmm. it, it's it, it's and then there's been other stories too that I mean we could talk forever yeah as well, so yeah so um I'm assuming with the D, like you train in the in the Dominican Republic and yes. Spain, you said. Yes. So like, so you're are you do you speak Spanish pretty Correct. well? So so that's one reason why I go to mostly right. Latin American countries because I'm fluent. So there's one less obstacle. You're a doctor. You're fluent in Spanish. You Correct. Up, and I'm sure a lot of them uh, are Roman Catholic or Catholic. Well, that's basically yeah. most of Central America right, is, right. is Roman Catholic. And interestingly, when we were in El Salvador, the uh, missionaries that are there had said that if you actually asked probably 95% of the population probably could quote scripture to you, mm -hmm. but they did, wouldn't know how to apply it. Right. Which is, which, which is incredible. Yeah. But it, looking back, even for me, I guess maybe God was preparing me all these years to go back there. Cause it's actually 30 years between the time I left the Dominican Republic and returned wow. on a medical mission. That was my first MTW trip was wow. to That must have been just Republic. one of those I, perspectives oh, where you look back you look over back. the years and- Exactly. Oh God. God was really working yeah. the whole time. Absolutely. Wow. That's wild. So um, we are going to uh, switch gears and get to sort of the fun, silly part of the uh, okay. conversation where we do our rapid cool. fire. Okay.
Share what you think. All right. So, and I, I tell people sometimes I ask favorite, say ice cream flavor, and people are like, "Well, I can't pick." Well, you know, just pick one. You yeah. don't have to. Uh, sure. Doesn't have to be. Uh, we're not going to hold you to this. And, okay. Uh, so, what is the favorite your favorite place that you've traveled? Well, I think since I studied in Spain and lived there for like three and a half years and learned the culture. So Madrid, Spain holds a special place in my heart. Wow. So it, it, the, the culture, the food, if you're in the food, <laughs> wine, right? siesta, it's like, it's right? like siesta. <laughs> That's right, they take a break still. In the, well, they've changed a little, they take a break in the middle of the afternoon still. Yeah. Start work, take a break, go, we work, work again. And then actually they go out in the evening. Right. They have a meal and they're out till like 10, 11 yeah. at night. It's like, wow. But, yeah, I would love to go to Spain. That would be, that would be on my bucket list. Um, what would you say is the most inaccurate medical show or movie that you've seen? <laughs> well, going back some time, I'm thinking what, there might be a couple, and this is before your time at least. There's Marcus Welby, MD. Okay. It's more a family show. So, I mean, it's not really medical. It's like I guess a kid it's doctor? Sort of, like, a... Well, no, he was, he was a family doctor, <laughs> but it was like a lot of the, uh, the storyline as far as the moral conclusion right. of, 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 of the uh, situation. And then, you, you might have been younger, Doogie Howser. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was, but they weren't meant to be medical in any sense, <laughs> but, right. Yeah, my wife obviously is a nurse, and yes. so sometimes we'll see clips of some stuff, yeah. and she's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what would you say is the movie that you've watched the most times in your life? Obviously, I, this is a guess, but. Yes. Well, I'm thinking because lots of times during the holiday, yeah, like I say, Christmas true. or Easter, I'm thinking around the Christmas holidays, most likely, I think, White Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Because we, were, we grew up with musicals. Right, okay. So Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, yeah. so we watch that pretty much every year. I do. I think, I I, I think I've watched it yeah. just about every year, so, too. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it is. Um, your favorite Flyers player of all time? I know the Lim family loves the Flyers. So we grew up with the Flyers and before the Flyers as well. They had actually the Jersey Devils was at the Cherry Hill Arena. Really? Grace Road where now the Vietnam Vietnamese market is. Yeah, right by my house. So yeah. there was there was a rink there. It was the Jersey Devils that was minor league before. Wow. They actually developed, you know. Went up to had, Newark. Yeah, yeah, which actually came from Colorado and, well, anyway. But uh, favorite Flyer of all time, I'd probably say Bernie Perron. Okay. And I don't know if people know that saying from the 70s, only the Lord saves more than Bernie. Have you heard that one? I don't know. But, but, I, hey, I haven't, but was, I didn't grow up hey, here. At the time, at the time, he, he was incredible goalie. That's how he, they won. Only the Lord saves him. more than Bernie. That's right. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so that that's, uh, so uh, was your dad a hockey fan? Uh, not really. I mean, he, he didn't have the opportunity. Okay. He immigrated from China. Right. Our mother is Chinese, but was born in Philadelphia. But he gave us the opportunity to, well, we couldn't play because at the time my brother actually wanted to play, but there was only one rink. Uh, and yeah. so the cost, even now the cost is, 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 yeah. is incredible. Bernie Perron. So um, if you could only have one breakfast item for the rest of your life, what would you pick? Probably eggs. Just I like scrambled, eggs. Scrambled, over easy? What do you want? I usually like over easy. Yeah. But eggs, I get the protein. I could eat them anyway. Yeah, oil, good. what have you. Hard All right. Um, what's a random fact about you that no one at Covenant, besides maybe Barry or your nephews, would know? Uh, I th I'm thinking some people may know, but I'm not sure um, that, I, I'll at least speak for myself. I guess speak for Barry, too. We, we used to follow the Grateful Dead. Okay. You're a deadhead, you know huh? We're deadheads. So if you want to go from, like, from the time I graduated from college, even though I like their music in college until Jerry Garcia passed, I think in 95, he went to on many, Barry, he could tell you how many hundreds of shares he attended. So wow. I, I don't, confessing for him. That doesn't now, surprise but. me, honestly. <laughs> I feel like you guys would, would uh, you know, yeah. would follow that. So um, what would you say is your favorite book of the Bible? Uh, John, I think that was the first one I really read, but just it's to the point and get, tells you that yeah. Jesus is, yeah. right? It's, it, it's really me, you can't read it enough. and realize that hey he's the word right he's all the gospels are great they're all great got something special, about exactly yeah that special touch um what would you say is the most used app on your phone so i'm thinking probably not that i do a lot of social media but 
checking like email because I get so much junk mail that I have to clear it out. So that way it's like, it's not so, it doesn't accumulate so yeah. much. So probably that's what I look at most on the phone. Okay, email. Um, would you rather live in a world with no caffeine or no meat? Well, I think I need protein. I love my caffeine and it varies on my addiction to coffee. Yeah. But I think I need the protein more than I need the caffeine. I think I agree with you. <laughs> so, I think I would go with yeah. meat. Yeah. Save the meat. Well, that is the end of the rapid fire. I uh, appreciate you talking with me and sharing a little bit about your life. And I'm sure um, many at Covenant will learn a little bit about you and, and your, uh, your testimony, your family. And so uh, appreciate it. Okay. It's great. been fun Thank getting to know you, you and, and Barry and Annette and your nephews and hearing a little bit of the history of your family and Cherry Hill. So. Yes. Right. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Craig. Okay. Take care.